thank you very much for coming to the Institute and congratulations for your medal. Um, thank you. The first question is, um, you've been kind of the superstar <laughs> of very various festivals at the Institute. Uh, what's been the best drawing duo that you've done? Well, it's very hard to say which is the best because they're, they're, they're all so different. I mean, I did, I did one with, um, the last one I did was with Philippe Dumas, who I've known for many, many years. So it was special for me because we hadn't seen each other for a long time. And in fact, before he arrived, I discovered a photograph of us taken here at the Institute. It must be 20 years ago. We looked a lot younger. Um, and that was memorable. I've liked them all. I, I, had, I had one with uh, Jean Sfar, and we know each other quite well. And we, in a way, we draw in a rather similar sort of way. So, so that was enjoyable. And one of the early ones I did was with Bruno Etz. And um, he's someone I've met in Salon, various places in France. So, so it was, it's very nice to, to, to meet friends again, really, I think. You know. Um, so just talking about Sfar. I noticed that in his uh, book he actually mentioned you. There, so, there, there are one or two mentions yeah. in one or two books. Which one is and this? this one's is just it? in the library, so I was wondering if you could just say a bit about that. And also, um, because we have the talk on Kuchartek, and he said that um, he takes his inspiration from bad drawings, so what do you take your inspiration from? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, um, I think... A lot of the time. Oh, there we are. Mm. Um, uh, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to say I've appeared several times in, in, uh, in Jean Sfar's books. And um, curiously, this, this, this is one which I, I think I haven't seen, strangely. Oh. Um, but uh, there is one with um, a photograph of me uh, just here across the road from the Institute where Jean was having his photograph taken. And he didn't quite know how to settle down to this. And he said, T give me something to look at. So I walked across the road and I did a bit of Charlie Chaplin for him. And he, that photo is, is in another one of these books. Um, and he, was, he, he said that um, for him, there were two ways of doing watercolor. And one was, one was mine, which was a sort of the messy way, I think. And the other was Hugo Pratt, mm -hmm. and, 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 who, who was a great admirer of. Um, well, I'm rather, I'm rather fascinated to see this. <laughs> Perhaps I can borrow it and yes, read it. But it's, it's, but I, I, I admire his work very much, and and um, I think we we both like that way of drawing. I think I mean he's he's a very good draftsman, um, and of course it's a, it's complicated for him because he because he writes a great deal as well. You know, and he has this wonderfully active mind. Um, but it's always very interesting to see what he does next. And I like what he does very much. Um, so the next question is about Penac. So I saw in the foreword that you came to the talk that he did at the Institut. This is... At the Institut Francais, Daniel Penac. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, no, I'm fascinated by Penac, and I was very fortunate to, to, to know him. Um, I, now, I, I can't remember what order we, 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 we did this in, but um, uh, he... I think the first time I knew about him was he'd written the book *Comme un roman*, which you know, which is about teenagers reading and so on. And um, it was it, it comes with a set of rules for not discouraging people from reading um, the *Droit des lecteurs*. And, and, and I illustrated that for Gallimard, and it appeared in England as well. And then uh, *Comme un roman* was was translated into English. And I was asked to illustrate it. And in fact, because he, he was a teacher for a long time, and I was a teacher not for very long, but that was what I was trained to be, I, I, I thought perhaps they allowed me to write an introduction to that book, because I felt we had felt very much the same about teaching and education. Um, and then subsequently he did this, um, uh, what is it? I forgot what it's called in French. <laughs> Oh, Charan, Charan yes, that's right. Um, and so I was pleased to do the cover for that. But he's, um, he's a very interesting man to talk to. And um, <clears throat> in fact, I did a book um, which is called 
in English it's, it's called um, The Life of Birds, and um, Gallimard were going to publish that. And um, it's, it's, it's not a book for children, it's an adult book, but it, 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 it depicts birds as people, or, or perhaps I mean people as birds. I don't know, <laughs> but I mean, they, they wear clothes, but they have beaks, that kind of thing. And um, it was fascinating to me because uh, I, I thought, I said to, wrote to Daniel and, and said, you're probably too busy, but could you write a few words for the beginning of this? And he, he said yes, and he said, but come and show me the pictures. So I took all the pictures and he wanted to look at them. But what, what, what was fascinating was they were different characters and so on. And I just got very little titles at the back, but he started looking at them and started inventing <laughs> titles for them. You know, and he, you could, it was almost as though he started writing stories. You know, he looks at this, ah, oh, le mot juste, you know, and... and uh, um, and so, we, of course, we have to talk about Roald Dahl. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, link. Who would you say is the most French character that you've drawn for Roald Dahl, if you had to put a nationality on his mm. <laughs> Well, this is a new question, and I've never thought of it. I mean, of course, all the books have been translated into French and are well known there. And um, um, he, 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 uh, there, is a, there is a story about, I believe, about Jean Sfar, who was who said to one of his friends, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to London to see Roald Dahl. And um, uh, he, his friend said, I don't think you can, now because this was after he died, you see. And, but, uh, but he was going to see me, which he thought was a, you know, was a sort of, yeah. oh, <laughs> would do very well kind of thing. Um, I don't know. I think this is a question I've never thought about before, but you've given me uh, this book of... Charlie et le grand ascenseur de verre on the chocolaterie. And um, it, 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 there could be an argument that it is uh, Willy Wonka, I think. Now I'm thinking about it because he has, he has uh, that sort of sense of humor and of mischief and um, um, I'm not quite sure what the French word is, but I think there must be something like mesquinerie or something like that. That it's, it's that sort of vivacity about his view of things and um, willingness to interfere with it in some way uh, that's interesting. Um, but uh, I'm not sure that you'd be wearing that, but that, that's, uh, that's possible, I think. So now about Les Fables de la Fontaine, which you've kindly brought for yes. us. Um, so, what would be your favourite Fab de la Fontaine? Can I get this out? <laughs> Do you need I had. I'll just screw that up. I had a wonderful time doing these because I was allowed to do 50, and um, but I read them all, I think. <laughs> and I was fortunate because. Um, there is a very good American translation, which is what the Folio Society use in, in, in this book. And, um, uh, but I, so I, I had the translation on one side, and then I had the French version on the other to make sure that it, 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 it all worked. It's, um, it's, it's very hard to say which are, the, are my favorites. I, um, what I was fascinated to discover was, was was how adult they were, you know, and, and, and obviously they, some are suitable for children, but others are, are not. And they're sort of, some of them are kind of short stories with it. And then there's this, the, um, I love this one about, just because it makes such a nice picture, this is, this is the, the, uh, the rat and the oyster, this is the little traveling rat. But, but there are some others where, where the fascinating ones where they're, where they are for, Adults, and this is uh, in English the death and the, the woodsman, and and uh, what, what, what's it, uh, Bouchard, uh, Lamont, or something like that. I don't know, but and there's a wonderful story there about he's suffering and carrying. You know, he's at the end of his life, almost really at the end of his tether, and he calls on death, and Lamont arrives and says, "What can I do for you?" And he says. You couldn't help me with these logs, could you? <laughs> but it's, a, it's, it's to convey that figure is, fa is fascinating. And the change of mood from one to the other is... is uh, this is another extraordinary one here. 
about the, uh, the, the man who has a cat whom he loves so much that he, he gets her translated into a woman, um, which, um, and it's, it's wonderful, it's all perfect until, do you know this story? Until, I do not the end. <laughs> <laughs> not until the mice the appear in the bedroom <laughs> and suddenly she, her instincts uh, allow themselves to, that was an irresistible picture to draw. <laughs> Um, so it's, it's, it's full of fascinating things to draw, and it's, I think maybe one of the... There is a certain um, 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 alert quality in, in, uh, in a relaxed but alert quality that, um, in, in, in La Fontaine that I love very much indeed, you know, so that, that was really one of the nicest things I've ever had to do. Um, and I don't know whether you want to ask me about Candide, but that's one of the other nicest <laughs> things I have to do. I think just to quickly finish, unfortunately. Yes, um, just as you wish. We've got, um, I found that Roald Dahl meant, uh, kind of answered a mini. Oh, yes, yes. Mm. Questionnaire. So oh. I thought we would ask you um, and then see if you have any long lost relations with <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dahl. <laughs> yes, I wonder if I can do that. Um, so, um, your favourite colour? Couleur préférée. Couleur préférée. C'est très difficile. Un mélange de tous les couleurs. <laughs> Rodin said yellow. So. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> um, votre plat préféré? Plat préféré? Probablement, c'est du poisson, c'est sans doute un homard, près de la mer, évidemment. Rodolphe, c'est du caviar. Votre musicien préféré Pour la musique, je suis presque sourd, effectivement, mais c'est. Sans doute, c'est. C'est Mozart. Mm, interesting. Uh, Roald Dahl said Beethoven. Yes. Um, uh, vos personnes préférées dans la vie. Dans la vie. Uh, non, j'ai quelques amis que, qui, qui sont mes amis depuis toute la vie presque. Il uh, y a, a quelques-uns qui, qui seront ici ce soir. Et, C'est difficile à, à trier entre euh, quatre ou cinq euh, qui sont mes, mes, mes préférés en quelque sorte. Euh, je peux faire mention de John Newman qui est ami et collaborateur dans les livres euh, et euh, l'artiste Linda Kitson euh, et, euh, qui était une de mes étudiants il y a longtemps maintenant, mais euh, tr très intéressant comme artiste et beaucoup d'autres. <rire> <rire> si je n'étais pas écrivain, j'aimerais être. Euh, je crois que je, ça serait euh, sans doute un, un enseignant, euh, peut-être euh, un comédien. Mais euh, si j'avais fait ce métier-là, il y avait sans doute problème avec euh, les paroles, même, même, parce que je n'avais pas assez de, de mémoire. Mais le, le, le rôle de comédien m'intéresse beaucoup parce que c'est ça qu'on fait en, en dessinant pour les livres. On, 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 on imagine qu'on est tout. Chacun de ces, chaque de ces, uh, de ces personnages. Hmm. And then, just the last word, what <gasps> advice would you give to <laughs> budding artists, whether they be French or English? Uh, dessiner, dessiner tout le temps. 